In a recent post-discussion on the topic, a sinless life, is it possible? Many Christians responded that it is not. They firmly believe that because of our sinful nature, we shall forever be slaves to sin. As I read through the responses I noticed that some were genuinely confused or ignorant about the doctrine of sin and how God deals with sin. So let us start from the beginning. We learn from the Bible that sin entered this world because of the fall of Adam and Eve, and as a result, everyone who has ever lived is a sinner. This is referred to as the original sin. It is not for an individual to decide whether or not he is a sinner, or if he feels sinful. It is a nature we inherited. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all sinned, Romans chapter 5 verse 12. That is why the psalmist laments, in sin did my mother conceive me. We are born with sinful tendencies, desires, and dispositions in our hearts. It is this sinful nature that causes us to make sinful choices, think sinful thoughts and have sinful feelings. So it has been said that we are not sinners because we sin, we sin because we are sinners. The other problem Adam left us, was the guilt of sin. Adam broke the law of God, for sin is a transgression of the law, and so was pronounced guilty. His penalty was death, eternal separation from God. We, as his children, because we inherited his sin, must also suffer the guilt penalty. Every human that has ever been born has this death penalty hanging over their head. And so Paul said in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So far we have learned that Adam, left us with two problems, his original sin and also the guilt of his sin. These two problems make us guilty before God and deserving of death. But we are told God does not take delight in the death of anyone, he wants everyone to repent and have life. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord God, and not rather that he should turn from his way and live, Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 23. Because of that, God in his love and mercy has dealt with both problems. For the problem of inherited sin, he sent Jesus to die and pay off the penalty of sin. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life, John chapter 3 verse 16. Jesus came to take away your sin, and put on you his righteousness. Therefore, anyone who believes in the redemptive work of Christ on the cross is justified before God and declared righteous. This justification happens only once in the life of a Christian. It is what is referred to as, being born again. The hammer of judgment that hung over our heads because of Adam's sin is removed. God no longer sees us as, sinners, he sees in us the righteousness of Christ. So the only remedy for any person to be free of the inherited sin is through faith in Christ. But, we realize that even though we have been born again, and we stand before God as the righteousness of Christ, we still have the urge to sin. It is this dilemma that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 7 18 minus 20, 24. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? This is because, though we have been born again, though we have been given a new birth, and have become a new man, our old sinful nature still lurks within us. The Bible says this old nature, which is referred to as the flesh, is always at war with our new nature, which we have gotten through faith in Christ. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish, Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. This sin which easily beset us is what is referred to as imputed sin. But again, we have not been abandoned to feel wretched, for God has dealt with this problem of imputed sin through the purifying power of the Holy Spirit. It is God's will that we should be sanctified and made holy. This comes about through purifying our minds and hearts with the word of God, prayer, and obedience to the word. So Jesus says, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth, John chapter 17 verse 17. God desires for you to be holy. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4-3-4, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor. We may slip along the way. But then we quickly get up, confess that sin to God, and he immediately forgives us and restores us to our rightful standing. John says, 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. Does that imply that we should forever be trapped in this cyclical sin loop? Sin, confess, be forgiven, and sin again? God expects us to grow, we are required to leave behind childish things, and the sins that so easily beset us. Paul asked the church in Rome, in Romans chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We are to be perfect men, attaining to the full measure of Christ, as Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 13 to 15. Sin should not have dominion over us so that we are always at its beck and call. We must grow out of this cycle of sin. That is why Paul told the Galatians. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever, the son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed, John chapter 8 verses 34 to 36. God never intended for man to live in sin. God is not glorified when his child sins. All through the scriptures, we learn that it is possible to remove sin from your life. It is possible to live a sinless life. Sin should not hold the Christian captive. Living a sinless life is not some utopian dream. It is not the desire of a delusional mind. It is attainable, Paul says. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. You see, insofar as we are in this world the temptation to sin will always be there. But must we fall for that temptation? No. There is always a way of escape from every temptation to sin that you find yourself in. It is your responsibility to find that way out. It is a choice you have to make. Peter tells us what to do to ensure that we do not sin, be even more diligent. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things you will never stumble, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Other versions render it, strive to make your calling and election sure. The Bible was written for us so that in observing to do what is written, we will not fall into sin. And so the Apostle John said, My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, 1 John chapter 2 verse 1. When Jesus saved the adulterous woman from the angry mob he told her, Go, from now on sin no more, John chapter 8 verse 11. We know Jesus did not lie to the woman. If Jesus knew it was not possible to live a sinless life he wouldn't have told the woman to, go and sin no more. So, he knew it was possible to not sin anymore. He came to set us free from the power of sin. He came to break us out of the prison of sin. By his death and his resurrection, he has broken the chains of sin over your life. That is why Peter says. As obedient children, do not conform to the passions of your former ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do, for it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 14 to 15. So when anyone asks me, can the Christian live without sin? My answer has always been, yes. In so far as we are in this world we will be faced with temptations. But for every temptation we face, there is always a way of escape. The choice is yours, escape or fall for the temptation. If you fall, rise up, shake off the dirt, and move on till you become a perfect man. If you have been blessed by this message, support our work by subscribing and sharing the video with friends and loved ones. God bless you. Amen.